Hey everybody, you may wonder why we're looking at a periodic table instead of a note guide or a PowerPoint or something like that, but it's because we are going to talk about noble gas notations, which is a shortcut for electron configurations, which means if I have a periodic table pulled out, you probably should as well. Um, so if you need to do that, pause the video, go grab a periodic table, and we'll work off of that. <clears throat> So hopefully you have yourself a periodic table. I want to do something here briefly for us. I'm going to write out the electron configuration for neon, and then I'm going to write out the electron configuration for sodium. So just as a review, for neon, it would look a little something like this. We would go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That one was neon. And for sodium, it would look a little something like this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So, what's going on there? Well, we're just writing out the electron configuration by reading a book across the periodic table, and you can see something when we do that you can see that this part of the electron configuration remains the same for both of these. And in fact, for any element that has more electrons than sodium, it's going to have all of those same things. It's always going to start 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So people obviously talked about, well, there's got to be an easier way to make a shortcut. And what we came up with is something called noble gas notation. So here's how it works. If you want to write an electron configuration for an element, if we allow you to write the shorthand or the noble gas notation, you need to find that element and find the noble gas that precedes it most closely. So for instance, what I mean by that is that sodium here is number 11. If I backtrack this way, the first noble gas that I come to is number 10. So noble gases, again, are all in this column. You want the noble gas that immediately precedes your element. And what we can do is replace this part of the electron configuration, because the pink electron configuration is for neon, we can replace that with the noble gas written in brackets. So instead of writing out 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, we're simply going to write Ne, 3s1. And we're done. We now know that neon takes care of this much of the electron configuration. What's left? This is in the third energy level. S sublevel first element, so there is your 3s1. On your note guide, it talks about some exceptions. We'll come back to those in a moment, but let's first get some practice. So you have some practice problems. Hopefully you have a periodic table out. You also have your note guide pulled up um, to do your practice problems. We're first going to write the noble gas notation for iron. So iron is Fe. Let me just erase what we have here, and we'll start from scratch. So for iron, if we look at its atomic number, its atomic number is 26. So if we backtrack from 26, the next noble gas that we get to in terms of atomic number before 26 is 18. So that's argon. So to write the electron configuration for argon short or for neon, uh, excuse me, iron shorthand, we're going to put AR in brackets. That's our noble gas, argon. And then what comes next? So after argon, argon got us up to atomic number 18. After that comes atomic number 19. So what is 19? That's part of potassium. That is in the 4s1 sublevel. But remember, we're going to call it 4s2 because we complete the sublevel. What comes after 4s? Well, we go to 3d. Remember, we drop down a number to go into the d sublevel. And if you look at iron, iron is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a 6 element, so there are 6 electrons in the d sublevel. You can still check your work, if you so desire, in this method by adding up your superscripts, because if you do that, you'll take this 6 plus this 2 is 8, plus the number of electrons in argon, which is 18. So 8 plus 18 is 26, and you'll notice iron is atomic number 26. So it works. Now, there's some other information we need to answer, right? So it says, how many electron-containing orbitals are in an atom of iron? Well, unfortunately, we kind of lost some of the information when we went shorthand. So this shows us why shorthand doesn't always necessarily, why it's not always necessarily the best choice, right? So let me write out the actual long electron configuration for iron, and we'll compare and contrast. So if we want to do that, we'd have 1s2, 2s2, 
2p6, 3s2, 3p6, uh, 4s2, 3d6. And so you'll notice we did save time on the front end there. That, that took a while to go through that entire red electron configuration. But it allows us to answer these questions a little bit more easily because letter A says, how many electron-containing orbitals are in an atom of iron? Well, remember that every s orbital, every time we've written s, that represents one orbital. So here's one orbital, here's one orbital. P represents three orbitals, so there's three orbitals. Here's one orbital, here's three orbitals, here are, uh, excuse me, there's one orbital there. And then it says how many electron-containing orbitals are in an atom of iron? Well, in the D sublevel, there are five orbitals, and they all have an electron because we've gotten up to six electrons, right? And we fill one at a time. So to answer a question like letter A, if we have the entire electron configuration written out, our life becomes easier because we just add up those green numbers. So we have one plus one is two, plus three is five, plus one is six, plus three is nine, plus one is 10, plus five is a grand total of 15 electron-containing orbitals. Now, how many of those are completely filled? Well, certainly all of these are completely filled, right? So that's right off the bat, we know that 10 are filled. Now, when we look at the D sublevel, I'm actually gonna get a little bit more advanced than we wanted to be in this video, but if I draw out that sublevel, right, it has five orbitals, one, two, three, four, five, and they all have two, well, excuse me, the, we need six electrons filled in there. And so as we're filling in those six electrons, remember, we give every electron its own location, we give it its own room to start with, if you will, and so we'd go like this, we'd give the first electron there, second electron there, third, fourth, fifth, and then we have to start doubling up, so there's your sixth. And so we have these 10 full orbitals in letter B, and here's one more full orbital. So for letter B, there are 11 of the 15 that are completely filled. And you'll notice as we draw this, this answer becomes really clear. There are four unpaired electrons for letter C. And which sublevel are they located in? Well, they are located in the 3D sublevel. So you'll notice, like, writing out full electron configurations and also drawing it in this manner, which is what we're going to do in the next video, actually makes our life a little bit easier for answering these types of questions. So let's try another one. We'll, uh, we'll write both, both methods out and see which one works best for us for our questions. So let me erase this. If you would like to get a head start in writing out the electron configuration for iodine, that would be excellent. Iodine is all the way down here. Again, um, you'll notice in number two, it first says write the electron configuration. So if we ask you to write the electron configuration on a test or quiz, that means the full thing. If we want the noble gas one, it would say the noble gas configuration or the shorthand configuration. So the fact that this says write the entire or write the electron configuration means we need to write out the entire thing. So we're doing the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Again, if you want to pause and get this down and then check your work, feel free. After 2p6 is 3s2, 3p6. Then we're 4s2. We are then to 3d10. 3, excuse me, 4p, 6, 5s2, 4d10, and if we look at iodine, iodine is in the fifth energy level, and it is the fifth element in, so that is 5p5. Now, letter A says, let's write the noble gas configuration. So let's make our life easier, right? Iodine is atomic number 53, which means the preceding noble gas is up here, Kr, number 36, right? So that's the number, that's the noble gas that's closest while having a smaller number than 53. You can't go to 54 because 54 is larger than 53, right? So that's why we have to go all the way back to Krypton. So we're going to put Kr in brackets and then complete our electron configuration. So Kr takes us the whole way through 4p6. What's left after that? Well, we have 5s2, 4d10, and 5p5. 
5. So again, certainly easier to do that than what we wrote out in blue, but let's look at what the, the questions have for us. Um, so letter B says, how many inner shell electrons does an iodine atom have? Well, inner shell electrons are basically all of the ones that out aren't outer shell electrons. <clears throat> and we haven't talked a great deal yet about outer shell electrons. However, we do have another name for that. It's called valence electrons, which is a term you've likely heard. And so valence electrons, we know that we want to have a grand total of eight valence electrons. And eight, conspicuously, is the sum of two plus six. So the eight valence electrons actually always come from the S and the P sublevel. And what's more, they come from the outermost S and P sublevel. And what you can see in noble gas notation is that it really clearly identifies the outermost S and P sublevel. So here are your outermost S and P sublevels. You have two electrons in the 5S sublevel and five electrons in the 5P sublevel. So you have seven valence electrons, seven valence electrons here. And that means that every single other electron is inner shell, which means if we have a grand total of 53 electrons and seven of them are valence, we have 46 that are inner shell. So for letter B, we have 46 inner shell electrons. Now, how many electron containing orbitals are present? Again, this is where we might want the full electron configuration. We did this math earlier. We know that S orbitals have, or there's one orbital in an S sublevel, one in that S sublevel, three in this P, one in the S, three in the P, one in the S, five in the D sublevel, three in the P, one in the S, five in this D, and we are looking for um, how many electron containing orbitals are present. We have all three of these containing electrons. So if we add all of those up together, we have 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 3 is 18, 19, 24. We have 27 electron-containing orbitals. How many of these orbitals are filled? Well, certainly everything up through the, the last second-to-last sublevel are filled. So all of these are filled. So at a minimum, we know that we have 24 that are filled. And if we draw out the 5p like so, remember how this sublevel fills. It fills one at a time. Oh, excuse me. The 5p only has three orbitals. My apologies. So 5p has three orbitals. We've filled one at a time, and then we can come back and double up. So we have these 24 filled plus these two. We have a grand total of 26 that are fill, filled up. And then how many are unpaired? Well, check it out. It's sitting right here for you. You have one unpaired electron in iodine. <clears throat> so if you got some, some clues on this video, be sure to watch the next one as well about orbital diagrams because that's going to take us a step further into drawing this type of picture and actually seeing where the electrons exist in orbitals.